good morning yes uh today we are going to learn the chapter chemical kinetics right again uh if you study if you are attentive in the class today itself you can learn that chapter you need not revise that chapter several times right so what we are going to do is to, again as usual as usual we will uh, first go through the uh, synopsis part then we can solve some questions okay and uh, usually uh, two to three questions are asked from this chapter last year there were three questions uh, in cet uh, usually three questions are asked from kinetics okay so shall we start and here look at this hard work will take you to the top right but talent will bring you to the door you may be talented but unless you put some effort you can't achieve whatever you want to do right so both talent and hard work will uh, uh, give excellent result fine screen is not visible okay yes so you can see this right yes the elevator to success is out of order you will have to use the stairs adarsh good morning yes inaya uh, you will have to use the stairs one step at a time okay so be attentive in the class and try to make best use of the class yes okay chemical kinetics now we are going to no shortcut for success yes rate of a reaction so in kinetics the name itself says name itself says uh, kinetics means what it's uh, the study of the rate kinetic means mo movement right yes so when you consider a reaction change in molar concentration of the reactant Once again, uh, Disha, you want to tell something? It's not connected. One second, one second. Yes. Uh, suppose I write a reaction. I write a reaction. Uh, R giving rise to one second. Yes, R giving rise to reactant giving rise to product. Now, average rate of a reaction. That is, uh, rate rate is the change in concentration. Average rate of a reaction. Change in molar concentration of the reactant or the product with respect to time. Time taken for the change. Okay. so or we can write final concentration of the reactant minus initial concentration of the reactant or the product also we can change now concentration of the reactant is decreasing with respect to time whereas product is increasing with respect to time so we write the positive sign for the change in molar concentration for the product and we write negative sign for the change in concentration of the reactants is that fine now uh yeah these are the expression now what is the uh, unit for molar concentration it's moles per liter right concentration is measured in moles per liter and time in second second is the si unit of uh, time we can uh, take hour or uh, minute or day uh, if the reaction is very slow okay so moles per liter per time in general we can say this is the si unit of uh, what rate of the reaction this won't change rate uh, the units of rate of a reaction doesn't change because it is a change in concentration by time so it doesn't change then what changes the rate constant can change okay rate constant can change the unit the units of rate constant may vary what is chemical kinetics chemical kinetics is the study of change in rate of a reaction okay rate means what the rate is a uh, change in concentration of the reactant or the product with respect to time did you understand varshita chemical kinetics deals with 
the rate of chemical reactions. Clear? Okay. So, huh. here, uh, I, the very important type of uh, questions I will uh, give you. That is, suppose I take one mole of A reacts with two moles of B, giving three moles of C and four moles of D, something like this. Okay, very general equation I have uh, taken. Okay, zero order reaction. Uh, let us uh, study one by one. Okay, now change in concentration of A with respect to time. How do I write? This is rate of disappearance also I can say. Okay, rate of disappearance. Rate of dis appearance here how you usually have confusion with this so please be uh, watchful here okay so rate of this appearance appearance of a is equal to see it is minus sign why minus because because it is decreasing change in concentration of a divided by dt okay similarly rate of disappearance of b see look at this what i'm rate of disappearance of b is equal to minus yes d of change in concentration of b divided by dt this is where is it correct is it correct rate of disappearance of b is minus d of b by dt is it correct what i have written is it minus half time? Should I write any, any, yeah, you are, yeah, do, should I write any stoichiometric coefficient here? No. Why? Because, so I'll give simple example, okay? Or I'll, I'll write one more. Rate of, rate of appearance, appearance of C or rate of formation, rate of formation also we can write, okay, rate of formation of C uh, is equal to, what should I write, minus D of concentration of C divided by DT, okay, then rate of appearance of, appearance of, rate of formation Ah, sorry, plus sign here because it is formation. Formation of D is equal to plus D of concentration of D divided by DT. I'm coming back to that stoichiometric coefficient. Now look at this. Suppose you want to prepare rice. You want to cook rice. Okay. Now you take one cup of, uh, one cup of, so A is rice. Okay. Raw rice. And this is water. Say, for example, I'm just giving the live example where you come across daily. So this is, or some piezum or something you want to prepare. Okay. What negative sign indicates? Negative sign indicates the decrease in the concentration. Reactants decrease. Okay, with respect to time. Whereas product go on getting formed, right? So it is given with a positive sign. Positive sign, see, it is D of C means what? Final concentration minus initial concentration. Here, final concentration of the reactant is less than the initial. Whereas here, final concentration is more compared to initial. Initially, it was zero. Clear? Okay. Now, I'm coming back to that preparation of uh, rice, cooking of rice or pies, or whatever it is. Okay, okay, simple example is rice. Daily we are preparing this white rice I'm taking. Okay, so one cup of white rice needs three cups of water. Okay, I've taken here two. Let, is, let it be two cups of water. Okay, actually we need three cups of water. But let us take two cups of water to prepare rice. Okay, now if I have one cup of rice, okay, that needs two cups of water to be cooked properly. Now, rate of disappearance of rice is what? Change in concentration of that. But when, when A changes by that, we need how much of B? We need two times. Okay. So, 
I'm not equating this. I'm just telling the rate of disappearance, rate of appearance. That's it. I'm not comparing them. Did you understand? So I'm not comparing one with respect to the other. Clear? But now I'm going to do that. Now, rate of disappearance of A, is it equal to rate of disappearance of B? Is the question. Is it equal to rate of disappearance of B? No. Why? Because when I use one cup of rice, I need two cups of water. Okay. Suppose I have, uh, I have uh, say, 10 cups of rice in a box and uh, say, uh, 20 cups of water in another vessel. Okay. I want to prepare, uh, I want to cook rice. Now, when I take out of 10 cups, I'm taking one cup. So, what is the uh, uh, remaining now? It is five. Initially, it was initially it was ten. Now it becomes uh, nine. So ten minus nine. What is the change? One for rice. Whereas for water, initially we had ten cups, but now we have eight cups of water. So what is the change? Two two cups of water is getting changed there. So rate of disappearance of B is two times the rate of disappearance of A. Did you understand? So when I want to equate these two, I can do that. I can do that rate of disappearance of disappearance of A is equal to what? Uh, a rate of disappearance of B I can write. So rate of disappearance of B is equal to two times the rate of rate of disappearance of try to understand. Yeah, disappearance of A. Okay. Uh, disappearance of A. I'll, one second, I have written it. Yeah. So please correct that. Okay. So, uh, rate of disappearance of B is equal to two times the rate of disappearance of A. That means, how do I write this? Minus D of concentration of B divided by DT is equal to two times minus D of concentration of A divided by DT. Or, rate of disappearance of A is equal to minus half of db by dt i can write right so this implies what minus d of concentration of a divided by dt is equal to minus half of d into concentration of b divided by dt and this is called the rate or this is equal to what this is equal to uh, plus 1 by 3 times D of concentration of um, C divided by DT and that is equal to plus 1 by 4 D of concentration of D divided by DT and this is called rate, rate of the reaction. Okay, so all these are the rate of the reaction. It's not rate of disappearance. It is all these equations, I can write it as rate of the reaction. Negative sign we can't cancel because just it's not the sign. It just indicates the decrease in the concentration. Okay, understood. It is rate of disappearance. The same means it is rate of disappearance of A. This just indicates it's, uh, it's decreasing. Okay, so you need not, uh, uh, what is that, cancel it. The rate, this, the whole thing represents rate of disappearance. Here also the minus, actually the correct way is, it's not minus half, it's half into minus. See the correct way of writing this, because you are used to this, I have written like this. Otherwise, the correct uh, way of representing this is like this. Okay, what is this? D of B by DT minus D of B by DT is rate of disappearance of B. And half of rate of disappearance of B will be rate of disappearance of A, which is equal to, again, this also, uh, one third of rate of appearance of C. 
okay and this is equal to one fourth of one fourth of rate of appearance of this appearance one second rate of appearance of plus again rate of appearance of d is that clear is that clear disappearance okay fine so this is what you have to uh, write okay now what is the general expression for the rate now go back to this rate sometimes it is it is not having any stoichiometric coefficient sometimes it is having stoichiometric coefficient rate of the reaction so how do you equate rate of the reaction and rate of appearance of disappearance can you give the generalized uh, concentration by time concentration by time is rate of appearance or rate of disappearance but rate of a reaction how do you calculate if i give you rate of disappearance of a is this much or b is this much what is the rate of this reaction not rate law no based on this i'm asking so i'll rewrite this okay i'll rewrite see here for the same reaction i'm writing rate of the reaction is equal to uh, a moles of a plus b moles of b also you can take rate for the previous reaction this reaction i'm considering ha huh, correct so this is equal to minus uh, b of concentration of a correct so that is nothing but what what did we write d of minus d of concentration of a we write what it is rate of rate of disappearance disappearance of a itself correct rate of disappearance of a itself but this is equal to rate of disappearance of disappearance of b divided by what divided by divided by 2 correct because it's half into see we'll go back to this see rate is equal to R minus da by dt what is minus da by dt come come back to this minus da by dt is what rate of disappearance of a and minus db by dt minus db by dt is what rate of disappearance of b but we are dividing it by 2 okay and that is equal to what it's 1 by 3 times rate of appearance of c and that is equal to rate of appearance sorry rate of yeah formation of b divided by 4 right so uh, uh, so this is equal to rate of formation so rate of appearance rate of appearance of c divided by how much it was 3 right is equal to rate of appearance or formation also i can take rate of formation or rate of appearance of d divided by how many times four times i hope this is clear or in general rate of a reaction is equal to rate of appearance rate of disappearance of the reactant rate of disappearance of the reactant or formation appearance of this yeah i why i'm taking this much time is many times the questions have been asked based on this okay where you have confusion rate of disappearance of r that's reactant or rate of disappearance uh, uh, rate of appearance of product divided by reactant this is reactant okay this is product product divided by their stoichiometric coefficient product i will write one product at a time we are taking so rate of appearance of product divided by stoichiometric coefficient okay so stoichiometric stoichiometric coefficient is that clear is it okay uh, no because when they asked the doubt raj singh 
uh, it might like uh, we you may also get the doubt okay so when you get the doubt better get it clarified otherwise what will happen is they will lose the next concept when you have a, a doubt you can't listen properly okay so you have to bear for that okay next so here we yeah law of mass action what is law of mass action so we have some question based on this uh, concept uh, let's do it later okay but remember if it is fraction akshay what do you mean by if it's fraction if it's fraction then again you have to divide by that fraction so that fraction can come to the numerator if it's half o2 yeah i understood your uh, doubt suppose you take no plus half o2 giving no2 is that your doubt right so now if i give rate of uh, disappearance of no see uh, raj if if we if i clarify your doubt as and when you ask then you get more uh, questions like this good question akshay yeah very good so rate of disappearance of no here rate of disappearance of no it's given d of no divided by dt is x i will give okay x moles per liter per second x moles per liter per second this is given this is a unit of uh, rate right so now i'm asked to calculate rate of disappearance of o2 rate of disappearance of o2 in terms of x is how much is asked so how do you do that now you solve this same same uh, way you can solve or rate of the reaction can also be asked now minus d of no divided by dt is equal to minus ha huh, half it's 1 divided by half akshay did you understand 1 divided by half so this half 2 of half goes to the numerator clear ha huh? 1 divided by half becomes 2 times yes so half into d of concentration of o2 divided by dt so this becomes minus of 2 times yeah it's a uh, minus i will take here because you can easily write that later so it is 2 times minus d of o2 uh divided by d t so what is now what we are asked we are asked to calculate rate of disappearance of oxygen that becomes what this is given as x correct so x by 2 becomes equal to rate of disappearance of see this is a nice example correct yes d of okay now what is the a rate of the reaction rate of the reaction is what what is the rate of the reaction here rate of the reaction is what now if rate of uh, disappearance of no is given that itself is rate of the reaction clear okay what is zero bhavanish okay so law law of mass action law of mass action what is law of mass action so it says rate of a reaction suppose you take a plus a moles of a plus b moles of b giving c moles of c plus d moles of d now these are the reactant and c and d are the products now law of mass action says that rate of a chemical reaction at a constant temperature because temperature uh, will decide the rate so at a constant temperature rate of a chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of the active masses of the reactant active masses of the reactant thank you baskar okay uh i will be more happy if you listen to the class properly and recipe like you have to respond then we will be the teachers uh, will get more satisfaction when the students do better in the test and make best use of the classes okay yeah rate is directly proportional to the product of the concentration of the reactants okay raised to the power appropriate coefficient so concentration of a raised to the power a a is the stoichiometric coefficient of reactant a then concentration of b raised to the power b 
okay b is the stoichiometric coefficient of b reactant b okay so this is what is active mass active mass is a molar concentration there is uh, one uh, question there was one question it can be asked in cet also uh, in this reaction concentration of a molar concentration of a is given as 0.2 moles per liter so what is the active mass of the reactant if the question is asked in equilibrium chapter there is one statement active mass refers to the molar concentration divided by its unit so molar concentration is this divided by moles per liter that is so activity okay activity or active mass activity of a or active mass of a is taken as 0.2 here this can be asked as a question okay so activity of a or active mass of a is 0.2 here if it's given as 0.2 moles per liter that's another uh, added question with respect to this now rate uh, is equal to or rate of the reaction is equal to when we remove this proportionality uh, symbol so we get k into concentration of a to the power a into b to the power b now this is true only for elementary reaction for co complex reaction it is not correct if it is taking what is elementary reaction then which takes place in one step okay if it is taking place in multiple step complex reaction then this is not applicable clear power raised may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient in complex reaction correct okay so this is law of mass action rate law i have written rate law is equal to this right now order of the reaction what is the difference between molecularity and the order say so when we come back to this if so this is a rate law suppose experimentally found rate law is this okay now the what sum of the powers of the concentration term so order of yes order is the sum of the powers of the concentration term so what is the order of this reaction order becomes a plus b correct but it may not be true because it is if it's experimental rate law then it is true if it's not experimental rate law then it is not true okay so you have to take elementary reaction there or final rate uh, experimental rate law you have to consider there clear uh, order of the reaction uh, it can be zero order it can be huh, uh, first order order can be fraction or negative also uh, but molecularity can be zero order can be zero also <coughs> sorry but molecularity of a reaction stands for it can be first order second order any order okay order of the reaction can be any anything but the molecularity is always a whole number it can't be zero because molecularity is what it is the number of molecules of the reactant involved in the elementary step so yeah now can we have zero zero molecules for a reaction to take place no why because if there is no reactant then how the reaction proceeds right so there should be at least one one mole of the reactant there right so molecularity can be one or two or three it's always a whole number okay uh ha huh, it is more than three is not significant what is why it's not more than three because the molecularity is defined as the number of molecules colliding at a particular time now there is very little chance of three molecules three molecules or more than three molecules colliding with each other at a particular time okay that is why the molecularity above three is insignificant that's why it's yeah minimum value is one and maximum value is three for the molecularity molecularity can't be a fraction okay it's always a whole number fine okay molecularity of the reaction i have explained uh, and we uh, now we uh, zero order reaction no reaction can take place with more than three reactant there can be more than three reactants at a time but the thing is the probability of 
more than three molecules colliding with each other is very less at a particular time. Okay, that is the reason why molar molecularity can't be more than three. Varsha. Okay. Uh, zero order reaction. What is zero order reaction? The reaction whose rate is independent of concentration of the reactant, right? Rate of the reaction doesn't depend on the concentration of the reactant. So that is um, zero order reaction. Suppose I write A, reactant A, giving rise B. This is R giving rise to P also. We can write, okay? Or reactant giving rise to product. This also we can write. Now, rate of this reaction, rate of this reaction is proportional to concentration of A or R raised to the power zero or rate is equal to, what is rate? Rate is equal to K itself, right? Because A to the power zero is what? A to the power zero is one. Yeah. So, rate is equal to K. Now, what is the unit of the rate constant for the first order reaction, uh, sorry, zero order reaction. So that itself is the rate, the units of rate itself, right? So unit moles per liter per second. So K, the units of a zero order rate constant is the rate uh, units itself. That's moles per liter per second, okay? Now, what is... Uh, you can, uh, what is that, at time t, then a, huh, all these derivation integral, uh, okay. So, when you take the integrated equation rate law, you get the expression k is equal to, which one here, rate, see, what is k, rate, what's the unit of rate? Rate is moles per liter per second. So K unit for zero order reaction. So units of K, units of K for a zero order, zero order reaction, zero order reaction is this one only. K is equal to moles per liter per second. Okay, molar, molarity, uh, yeah, molarity. T by time. Okay, SI unit. Did you understand? Yes. Coming back to this, I'm asking integrated rate uh, law for the zero order reaction. So, what, how do we calculate? So, we can uh, do that, right? So, integration rate constant. We will come back to that. Yes. So, we have K is equal to. Yeah, uh, you have to eliminate. Yeah, you can go for elimination method uh, with this rate constant uh, units, okay? So K is equal to, for a zero order reaction, we have R naught or A naught also we can take if R is a reactant. R naught is the initial concentration minus R divided by T, okay? R naught minus R divided by T is uh, what? It is K value for a zero order reaction. Okay, so this is one important um, expression for a zero order reaction. So what they can give is, they, can, they, they will give initial concentration. They'll give the concentration remaining and uh, time, okay, uh, time will be given, K will be asked or K will be given, T will be asked, clear for a zero order reaction. So calculate R naught uh, will, will be given, K will be given. Calculate time for 50% or 40% completion of a zero order reaction. If the question is asked, 40% completion means, will you calculate this uh, as 40 here? Will you substitute as 40 or what is that? Shall I repeat the question? Yeah, I repeat the question. K value for a zero order reaction is X. Okay, what is X? X moles per liter per second. Okay. Now, uh, R naught initial concentration, initial concentration is given as uh, same concentration I can give as 0 0.1, 0 0.1 moles per liter. 
Now, calculate time required for forty percent completion of this reaction. Yeah, a zero order reaction example I'll give. Okay, this is a question. First, solve this. So x, yes, here. R not is 0 0.1. What is T 40%? Here, nothing is mentioned. Whether it's zero order reaction, nothing is mentioned. But look at this. Baskar, uh, somebody, right? Baskar, you have told, uh, you can go for elimination method. Here, I will not give it's a zero order reaction. So from the units, you can make out it's a zero order reaction. For a zero order reaction, we have T 40% is equal to, what is R not? R not is 0 0.1. And, uh, forty percent is it's it's asked t forty percent. That is, we are calculating the time taken for forty percent completion. So how much will be remaining? Remaining will be how much? If forty percent is completed, ah, uh, sixty percent will be remaining. But sixty percent of point one, what is that? Sixty percent of point one. What is sixty percent of point one? Is it zero point six? We have taken 0 0.1. Can 0 0.6 moles per liter be remaining? 60% of 0.1, I'm telling 60% again. See, so how is it 0.9? It's, it's, it's a very simple logic. We have 0.1 moles in the beginning. So can we have 0.9 moles after the reaction? No, right? It should be less than 0.1. So 60% of 0.1 is what? 0 0.06. You have to be very careful while substituting. Okay, 0 0.06 divided by divided by x. Where is x? See, k. I have to, I have to take t here, k here. So, k will come. K, k value have given it as x. So, what is the answer? 0 0.1 minus 0 0.06. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.06. What is that? 0 0.04 divided by x will be the answer. 0 0.04 divided by x would be the answer. Did you understand? The question is very simple. And uh, formula uh, in which you have to substitute the value is also simple, but you have to be very careful about this. If you are asked to calculate the time taken for 40% completion, this R is not reacted. It is remaining. This you have to be careful everywhere, wherever here after we are discussing. Okay, so it is remaining amount. It's not the reacting. Why wait? Versha one by one we are doing. So I'm I'm now showing the equation. Next, it's there. Graph is there. One second, wait. We will go uh, one step at a time. Okay, so R not minus R divided by T. Repeat R not minus R divided by T is equal to K for a zero order reaction. Repeat five times to yourself. Quick. Okay, K is equal to R naught minus R divided by T. This is applicable for a zero order reaction. Now, when we plot R versus T, see, I can, I think, next slide. We will go to the next slide. See, I'll go back to the slide, uh, this one, equation. That is, KT is equal to R naught, R naught minus R. Now there can be two plots, that is R naught minus, <clears throat> rate, rate of the reaction is, we can uh, measure the rate of appearance or rate of disappearance of one particular reactant, whereas rate law will give the overall picture of the reaction. That is, rate of the reaction depends on which uh, molecule, to what an extent it depends, okay? So that is given by rate law. Rate law is for the whole reaction, whereas rate, when I say I'm discussing with respect to one particular uh, reactant, I can discuss rate of uh, formation of a rate of disappearance of something like that, okay? That's a main difference, okay? Now, uh, T is variable, R is variable here. K and R naught are constant, right? So I can bring R, I can have two plots. That is R naught minus R versus T or R uh, versus T. So R, when I take it to the left side, it becomes R naught, correct? R naught minus 
K T, right? R naught minus K T. We have the graph. Yeah, this is the graph. Concentration of R, concentration of R is equal to, this is if I take this as Y is equal to, this is C, it is constant, okay? So this is MX plus C or this I will rewrite it as minus KT plus R naught. Okay, so this I can write it as this is MX plus C. What is M here? M is a slope, right? So slope is minus K. Okay, it's negative. That means what type of graph you're getting? So C is a Y intercept, right? C is a Y intercept here. Correct. So what does the minus sign indicates? Minus sign indicates the decrease in concentration. So concentration of R decreases with the time. That's what we have here. Concentration of R decreases with the time. It was very high in the beginning. Now it goes on decreasing. Correct. So this value, the Y intercept is giving us, it's giving us the R naught value. K will be minus times the slope. So this is what uh, we have for the zero order reaction. See, so go back. This is KT is equal to R naught minus R. You have understood, Puneet. We will go back to this. You have understood, right? Yeah, slope. Uh, you have studied the equation for straight line in maths. Y is equal to MX plus C, correct? Where M is the slope. Slope is what? It's y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 slope, right? So C is the constant y intercept there. Now, m x is variable there. Understood? X is variable. So here T is variable. So whatever coefficient is there along with x, that becomes a slope. So what is associated with the T? It is minus k. So m should be equal to minus k. Did you understand? need did you understand then c is the constant there right that is y intercept so it is r not understood shall we proceed is that fine so the question can be asked which of the following correctly represent the uh, what is that mm, uh, graph correct graph for the zero order reaction now let us come to half life of the zero order reaction okay half life for zero order reaction half life what is half? Yes, yes, uh, particular value for, from the graph. Yes, uh, this graph will be given. And this is uh, for zero order. The, from the graph, you can understand uh, the reaction is zero order, uh, first order, second order, etc. In the graph, it does not touch x-axis at the end. X-axis at the end. It can... Concentration can become zero. It can. It can touch. Uh, zero order reaction can proceed towards completion. Okay. Zero order reaction can proceed towards completion. Whereas, uh, whereas first order reaction doesn't com uh, complete. It will not proceed towards completion. It can touch at the end. Somebody asked, right? It's not equilibrium. There's no reactant left. See, what is this? It is concentration of R. Concentration of R is reaching zero. What is the meaning of concentration of R reaching zero? Reaction is over. The reactant is uh, completed. We don't have any reactant there. Understood? Yeah. Product. All are converted to product. Bhumika, it is not 0 0.069 divided by K. 0 0.693 divided by K is applicable only for the first order reaction. Identifying the graph is uh, the question, but I am asking to find the particular value from the given graph. Okay. K can be asked. So they may give the uh, values here. Okay, so some values can be given. This value and this value will be given. So from, uh, see, this value will be given, this value is given, and this value is given. Something like this, they may uh, give these values. And from this graph, you have understood it is zero order reaction. And you find the slope, and you may be asked to calculate K here. Okay, so K is nothing but minus slope, right? So you first find out the slope of this graph. So that itself will give you the, uh, what is that? Rate constant for this reaction, fine? Which the concentration of the reactant reduced to half of its initial value is called half-life, yes, fine. So we will go back to this. Half-life is the time required for the 50% completion of the reaction, correct. 
So we have T for a zero order reaction. Remember, I'm discussing this for a zero. We are in the zero order reaction. The side heading for all these discussion was zero order reaction. I hope you have focused on it. See, I still, I'm still in zero order reaction. I didn't go to the first order. Okay, so it is in the zero order reaction only. Now, T is equal to, what is T here? T, T is equal to R naught minus R. R naught minus R divided by K. When it is 50 percent completion, correct. When it is 50, when T is equal to T 50 percent T half, what will happen to R? R becomes R naught divided by 2, 50 percent completed. So what is T 50 percent for this? What this question had been asked several times in different exams. Okay, CET also this question had been asked. I'm not included this question because it's a direct concept. Correct. So if you know this, you can easily uh, T half of a or T fifty percent of a zero order reaction is. See what is this? It is R naught minus R naught divided by two divided by K. R minus R naught by two is what? R naught only. Correct. So R naught divided by K or sometimes R is represented, R naught is taken as A, A by 2K because sometimes the representation, old textbooks and all, now you still you have this A. A is taken as initial concentration. What is R naught? Yeah, uh, R naught is equal to a is taken okay so then a or if it's taken as x initial concentration of the reactant is x then x by 2k etc is that clear okay now one more question will be asked so this is a direct result t 50 percent of a repeat 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 yourself t 50 percent of a zero order reaction is a by 2k t 50 percent t half of a zero order reaction this is for which reaction zero order reaction Okay, right. This is not for the first order. It's, it's applicable only for the zero order reaction. Okay. Uh, what is the unit of this A by 2K? A by 2K is what? Second or time. Okay. Now, T 100%. Can you tell me? What is the time taken for the 100% completion of the reaction? 100% completion of the reaction. Quick. 100% completion of the reaction. Aha, uh -huh, Shri, Shri Nidhi, it's not infinity. Infinity is for, <clears throat> infinity is for first order reaction, not for this. Substitute here, what is R? R is zero, correct. So R naught minus zero, correct, minus zero divided by K. What is that? R naught divided by K or A divided by K. Or can I tell this as, in terms of T half how to write, can I tell it as T 50% for a zero order reaction? Can I say T 50% of, sorry, T 100% of a zero order reaction, T 100% of a zero order reaction is equal to, Two times T half, T 50%. Can we say like this? Yes. Okay. So if I give you um, T half of a zero order reaction is X. What is uh, the time taken for 100% completion of that reaction? If I give you that question, 2X. Did you understand? Okay, uh, somebody asked me the example for a zero order reaction. Photochemical reaction. Okay, all photochemical reactions are zero order reaction and decomposition of uh, say HI, NH3, all these are uh, zero order reaction. R naught by two is zero. R naught by two is not zero. R naught, uh, R, R is zero. R is zero. What is R? When it's T hundred person, when the T hundred person means what? Namrita, what is T hundred person? T hundred person means reaction is completed. When the reaction is completed, do you have any reactant left? No reactant left. So 
all reactants are consumed. So R is equal to zero. What is R in the notation there in the previous? Yeah, what is R not? It's the initial concentration. That can't be zero. But R is the reactant remaining. So I have written here reactant, the concentration of the reactant remaining. What is this? This becomes zero when P is 100%. Is that clear? Namrita, did you understand? Huh. Then to offer decomposition a zero order reaction. But look at that on what surface? On a metal surface. Okay, that is surface chemistry. I've studied adsorption. Once the layer, chem is option, doesn't depend on the pressure, correct? So once the layer is complete, when the uni layer is completed, then even if you add more reactant, that's not going to affect the rate of the reaction. So metal surface is required for the reaction. Otherwise, it is not zero order reaction. So any decomposition of HI is a zero order reaction. Okay, so some enzyme catalyzed reactions are zero order reactions. So what you do is some two or three examples are there in the book. Just go through that example enough. Okay, which of the following is a zero order reaction can be asked. Clear? Chemis option is unimolecular, right? Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Huh, one more. T half. <coughs> uh, if the order of the reaction is in fraction, what is the SI unit? Yeah, we will study that. Okay, units of order of the reaction. We will learn that later. First, let me complete this. Yeah, T, I was talking about T half, T half of a zero order reaction. So we'll go back to T half. T half of a zero order reaction was R not divided by 2K, A by 2K, correct? So T half is equal to A by 2K. T half of a zero order reaction is equal to A divided by 2K. 2 is a constant, K is a constant. So T half is directly proportional to initial concentration or T half is directly proportional to R naught. Okay, this is applicable for, this is applicable for which reaction? Which reaction? It is for zero order reaction. Okay, it's zero order reaction. Now, <clears throat> For a zero order reaction rate, suppose I draw the rate with respect to concentration. Okay, so this is the rate of the reaction and this is the concentration. Concentration or time also I can say. Okay, so what type of graph you're getting for zero order reaction? Huh, it's independent. Varun, what is the meaning of independent? So is it parallel to x-axis? Is that the graph what we are going to get? Rate versus time or concentration. So we are going to get this. Clear? T half is usually inversely proportional to initial concentration of the reactant. To the power, I'll, I'll get back to that. Okay. Um, yeah. Somebody asked T75%. Okay. T75%. For a zero order reaction. See, T75%, T75% is equal to R0 minus, what is T75%? 25% is remaining. So R is equal to three uh, fourth is reacted, right? So one fourth of R0, correct? So this is equal to R0 divided by four. So divided by uh, K, right? A by K is 100%. Okay. So R not minus, which one you're talking about, Rina? Uh, it's A by K, which one? A by K. So R not 4 minus uh, 1. So it is 3 by 4 times R not divided by K. Correct? 3 uh, R not divided by 4K, right? But I'm again writing it as uh, 3 by 2 into R0 divided by 2K. Okay, what is R0 divided by 2K? It is T half. So it is 3 by 2 times T half, T50%. Okay, for a, a zero order reaction. So we have T75% is equal to 3 by 2 times T50%. Okay, so it is 
one. Like this, you can, if you can remember, you can calculate another uh, second 30 half T 87.5 percent, something like that. You can uh, calculate and keep it as a result, final result, so that you can solve the questions very easily. So let us move to the first order reaction. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, first order reaction. What is a first order reaction? First order reaction is the one in which the concentration, the rate of the reaction uh, depends on the first power of the concentration. Correct? Now look at the uh, expressions what we are uh, learning. It's applicable only for the first order reaction. Don't apply that for the uh, zero order reaction. Do you understand? Now, uh, suppose we take R giving rise to product is first order reaction. Okay, rate law, we can write rate is equal to, or rate is proportional, I can write rate is equal to K into concentration of R raised to the power one, correct? Then rate is equal to minus DR divided by DT is equal to K into concentration of R, we can write. Then on integration, all these things, just I'm writing the integral rate law, integrated rate law for the first order reaction, that is, K is equal to, or KT is equal to also I can write, K is equal to one divided by T ln concentration of R, that is R naught divided by R. Simple equation is this. Or we can also have ln R naught by R is equal to KT. Correct, ln R naught divided by R is equal to KT or R naught, as I mentioned, it is A, and this is A minus X, if X moles is reacting at time T. Okay, now again, it's uh, uh, it's just like, uh, what? Straight line equation, correct? So Y, if you take this as Y, is equal to MX plus C, you have MX plus C. Uh, or if I take, R by R naught, okay, R by R naught. So I'll interchange this. Lan concentration of R divided by R naught is equal to, I can write minus KT. Yes, it can be converted to log, yes. So if again, it's equal to MX plus C, where M C is zero, and where M is equal to minus K. Okay, here m is equal to plus k. Look at the difference. When when we plot r naught by r, if you plot r by r naught, m becomes equal to k. Yeah, wherever lan is there, lan is base e. Where I have to convert it to base 10, then I have to multiply by 2.303. So same equation I can write. Log of concentration of r divided by r naught is equal to minus Two, uh, sorry, I have to, yeah, K divided by 2.303 T. Or this equation I will rewrite. K is equal to 2.303 divided by T log of concentration of R naught divided by concentration of R. Clear? Is it clear? All these equations, just I'm, I'm interchanging all this, nothing else. Yeah, very thorough. If you are very thorough with uh, the maths and all, you can easily learn this. All right? Okay. See, these are the graphs. I told you R naught by R. See, we will go back to this R. Lan R naught by uh, R naught by R is this. See, Lan R naught by R. See that graph. Lan R naught by R versus time. Versus time. It should give us a straight line passing through origin because, because, C is zero here, all right? And slope is slope is equal to because log log we are plotting, so it is k divided by two point three zero three. Otherwise, it would have been if it was lan lan, then the slope would have been um what slope would have been k itself. Understood? So here lan r lan r. How do you go for lan r lan r? So this I can write lan R is equal to 
minus k divided by this one i'm writing okay minus k uh, into t then plus lan r not lan became log lan x is equal to this is base e so it becomes 2.303 log base 10 x this is the conversion factor okay fine minus kt plus lan r naught now you plot lan r lan r versus t when we plot we are getting the intercept intercept y intercept as lan r naught and k becomes minus the slope becomes minus k understood okay uh, so this these two are the important graphs with respect to first order reaction clear fine so next we can calculate t half t half of a first order reaction so i will rewrite t is equal to 2.303 divided by k into log of r not divided by r now 2 point t half let us take or a by a minus x also we can take t half t half is equal to 2.303 divided by k log r not will not change but r becomes r not divided by 2 okay so this is equal to 2.303 by k log of r not r not will can cancel so log 2 right so this i can write it as this is one expression for t half okay so 2.303 into 0 0.3010 log 2 divided by k this is another expression okay 2.303 into 0.3 of course you remember this value as 0 0.693 correct 693 divided by 693 you get divided by k you get that but but what i am trying to say here is it's important to know all these expressions so that say i will write all these two point uh, okay so this is equal to t half is equal to actually 2.303 log becomes lan is it lan 2 divided by k or 2.303 log 2 divided by k or 2.303 into 0 0.3010 divided by k okay so if you have or, or 0 0.693 divided by k so anything if you remember that it becomes easy for you to calculate whenever we require some value where it's getting cancelled then you can use that otherwise you can retain this okay so that is how you how to remember or directly it can be asked which of the following re relations hold good for the first order reaction land 2 by t half is equal to land 2 by k if it's given will you put it as wrong or is it correct it is correct land 2 divided 0.693 how do you get it is land 2 divided by k do you understand or 2.303 log 2 by k is also correct or this is also correct do you understand so all these uh, expressions are true for a first order reaction i hope this is clear and you are observing it is without r not that is independent of so i can write t half is a to the power zero that means it is independent of initial concentration so suppose i plot the graph t half versus a initial r not then what type of graph you are going to get it is this this is for a uh, which reaction it is for a first order reaction remember we got similar graph for zero order reaction but what versus what i plotted rate versus time i plotted here or rate versus concentration i plotted whereas here i am plotting t half versus concentration initial concentration so that is the difference between the two graphs okay so if t half if you are getting like this it is a first order reaction if rate versus a if you are getting this then it is a zero order reaction so please be watchful careful in those two okay next um yeah very now based on this only t half 
T half is in T half of a first order reaction is independent of initial concentration, whereas T half of a zero order reaction is directly proportional to the initial concentration. Okay, now coming back to that, I'm I'm deriving certain. See, I'm giving you shortcuts. Please write it carefully. I'm giving you the shortcuts. Okay, how to solve the question based on this? T half, T half is to T uh, three four is to T seven by eight is to T fifteen by sixteen is to T thirty one by thirty two thirty yeah uh, thirty two. Is to like this. We can go on doubling this one less than that. Thirty-two twos are sixty-four. Sixty-four one less than that will be sixty-three. Okay, T sixty-four twos are one twenty-eight divided one twenty-seven divided by one twenty-eight like this. Okay, is equal to look at the beauty. It's one is to two is to three is to four is to five is to six is to seven. Okay. Like this, I can go on writing. Before this, I want you to write something else now. Okay, what is this T half in percentage? Calculate quickly. You can calculate T half. You know what is T half? It is T fifty percent. Okay, T fifty percent. What is T three by four? Seventy five percent. Good. Next, seven by eight. Seven by eight. Quick. What is seven by eight? I have written equal. It's not equal. It should be east to. What is seven by eight? Eighty-seven. Now eighty-seven point five percent. Correct. Next, fifteen by sixteen. Fifteen by sixteen. T ninety-three point seven five percent. Correct. Next, T thirty-one by thirty-two. You can calculate quickly. You have the calculator with you. Write thirty-one by thirty-two. Ninety six point eight seven five. Okay, eight seven five percent. Okay, next sixty three by sixty four. Sixty five by sixty three by sixty four. Ninety ninety six point eight seven. After that, ninety eight point four three. Is it ninety eight point four three? Right. So T is equal to ninety eight point four three. Next, the last one. One twenty seven. Ninety nine point two one. See, it becomes less and less. Right. So ninety nine point two one percent like that you can calculate some more. Okay, one twenty eight two is a two fifty six two fifty five by two fifty six. Like then you can you can go on writing this and this is equal. How easily you can solve this question? See, one is to two is to three is to four is to five is to six is to seven. Okay, like this. Ha, huh, but it won't become hundred percent because it goes on in like. The first uh, order reaction is exponentially; it is decreasing, so it never reaches hundred percent. So remember that if you are asked the question, very simple question: time taken for fifty percent completion of a first order reaction is twenty minutes. What is the time taken for the reaction to be hundred percent completed? What is the answer? Listen to the question carefully and answer the question. T half of first order reaction is twenty minutes. What is the time taken for hundred percent completion of that reaction? Infinity. Yes. Why it's infinity? Because first order reaction never proceeds towards completion. Okay, so it go goes on uh, like that exponentially. The concentration goes on decreasing. Fine. Now, suppose I'm uh, asked T fifty percent of a reaction is. T fifty percent. Okay, and one more thing, I can write T fifty percent and T hundred ninety nine point nine percent. Ninety nine point nine percent is equal to. It's not ninety nine point nine nine percent. Sathya, it should be ninety nine point nine percent. Okay, ninety nine point nine percent is ten T halves. Ten times T fifty percent. Or ten T halves. Okay, so T time taken for ninety nine point nine percent of the reaction to be completed is ten times the T half. Clear? Okay. So this is another result. Why it is not hundred percent? You can go on calculating this. It becomes 
it's exponential means when you look at the rate law it is exponential right so it is when you when you take this so when you go for lan uh, which one this one yeah this you have right r not by r is equal to kt or lan r by r not is equal to minus kt so what you write r by r not concentration of r divided by concentration of r not is equal to e to the power minus kt you have exponential it is okay so r is uh, decreasing exponentially it is not linear did you understand that is why it is uh, never reaching 100% factors of influencing rate of the reaction uh, one is concentration and it is uh, deleted effect of temperature is deleted so i'm not going to discuss that catalysis catalyst uh, all those things okay fine um, so this is one uh, equation one relation which you can use then one more i'm giving t 90% is to t 99% is to t 99.9% you just go on adding 99 t 99.99% is equal to 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 this is another shortcut to solve the questions okay then one more um, in general we have t 50% yeah t 50 percent divided by or t x percent i will take in general t x percent divided by t y percent i hope you are following what is x percent y percent okay x percent is the time taken for x percent of the reaction to be completed it can be 90 it can be 20 anything is equal to See, 2.303 by K, first order, 2.3, same reaction, 2.303 by K will get cancelled. So, we have log of 100, initial concentration, let us take it as 100, 100 minus X divided by log of 100 divided by 100 minus Y. This is a simple way to calculate. If T X percent is given, Y percent is asked, you can calculate like this. Okay. Or another T uh, 50 percent by T Y percent X I have taken it as 50. Following no news from your side. Following yes okay. Uh, T 50 percent is what log 100 divided by 100 minus 50. Okay, 50. X, I have taken it as 50. That's it. Same, same expression, same equation. I'm taking X as 50% so that the question becomes easier. Log 100 divided by 100 minus Y. So it becomes easier now. What is this? Log 100 by 50 is 2 divided by log 100 divided by 100 minus 5. Okay, so what is log 2? log 2 is 0 0.3010 right so we will take 3 3 for calculation we can take it as 3 no problem so log of 100 is log 2 minus log 100 minus y whatever is given okay 100 minus y so this is how you will get this t 50 percent by t y percent no it is not 0 0.693 satvik that is what i said it is log 2 only because that 2.303 is getting cancelled here Understood? That's why you don't take that 0 0.693 here. Um, what else? Yeah. Now, from this, from this, I uh, say, suppose the question is asked, T 50% of a reaction is given, you are, cal you are asked to calculate T 90%. Can you do that? Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Did you understand? T 50%, T 50%, I'll give 20 minutes, 40 minutes, etc. I will ask you to find T 90%. Can you do that? So it is 0 0.3 divided by log of 100 divided by 100 minus what should I take? Yes, very good. 10. Why 10? 
if 90% is completed, how much is remaining? How much is remaining? 10 is remaining. 100 by 10 is how much? 100 by, so it is 0 0.3. 100 by 100 minus 10 is 90. Correct? So log 100, log 100 divided by 90. Correct? So log 10, something is missing. Ah, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Ah, 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 yeah, I have written wrong. It should be 90 only because it is uh, reacted. I have to take Y itself. Okay. Ah, yeah, 90 only. 10 is remaining. Okay. Yeah. So it should be 10. Did you understand this? Yeah, 100 minus 90. Guru Dutt. Thank you. So it is log 10. Log 10 is 1. So you're getting 0 0.3. Now you have a new result. Can you tell me what is that? T, huh? T50% is equal to T50% is equal to 0 0.3 times T90%. Is it not easy? Is it not easy to remember? And it's easy to calculate also, right? If T50% is given and if you are asked to calculate T90%, then what do you do? 10 divided by 3, correct? 10 divided by 3, what is that? 3.33 into t 50 percent t half of this is see whatever we are discussing it's applicable only for which order reaction all these discussion whatever we are discussing it's applicable only for first order reaction you have to bear that in mind clear yes first order reaction because t half is independent of initial concentration understood okay this is one result now one more I want you to calculate like this, this result for 60% calculation, 60%, uh, T 60%. Do it for 60%, T 60%. If it is 60, log 4 is 0 0.6, 6020. Log 4 is 0 0.6, 6 you've taken up. Very good, Vinaya. What is 0 0.75? T half is 75% of T 60%, right? Hmm, three fourths, right? So T 60% or T 50%, I'll take. T Fifty percent is equal to what is the answer? T fifty percent is equal to three by four times three by four times T ninety percent. You are getting three by four times zero point seven seven nine seven five. You get sixty percent. Correct? Yeah, so 60%, right? Yeah. So it should be 60%. See here, I'll do this. Here, what will happen is I'll change here itself. Uh, suppose it is 60%, what will happen? This becomes 60. 100 minus 60 is 40. Log 10 is Log 10 is uh, 1, log 10 is 1, log 4 is 0 0.6. So you are getting 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.4. 3 by 4 times T60%. So you have this another result. Okay. So 75% of T60% is that. Clear? Is that clear? Yes. Clear, right? Yes. Shall we proceed? Okay. So remember, try to remember so that anything... Uh, the questions you can easily solve. See, Guru Dutt, if you know all these shortcuts, you can easily solve the questions, right? So all these are a kind of questions only. Don't worry. Log in exam. Log value will be given in the exam. Clear? Uh, something else I wanted to tell. Huh. Time taken for a particular fraction of a first order reaction is always fixed. That means not only T50%, T30% is also fixed, T60% is also fixed. Okay, so I will solve that question later. 
uh, this I had written something. Uh, a naught giving A naught by two is uh, one T half. Then A naught by four in another T half. A naught by eight is another T half. So A naught by 16 is uh, another T half. Okay, so in one T half, it becomes A naught by two. In two T halves, it becomes A naught by four. In three T halves, it becomes A naught by uh, eight. Four T halves, it becomes A naught by 16. So what are you observing here? Two to the power four, two to the power three is eight, two to the power two is four, like this. So in general, what I can write for a, again, it's applicable only for which reaction? It's applicable only for the first order reaction. So we have concentration of A present after N half-lives, where N is the half-life here. A naught divided by two to the power N. Okay, so A naught two to the by two to the power N represent the concentration of the A remaining after N T halves, right? One T half two to the power one, two T halves two to the power two, three T halves two to the power three, four T halves uh, two to the power four like this, clear? Yeah. So in general, for any order reaction, yeah, uh, for any order reaction, this is applicable for any order reaction, T half of any order reaction is inversely proportional to the initial concentration raised to the power N minus one, where N is the order of the reaction. If n is zero, then a to the power minus one t half is directly proportional to a. If n is equal to one, a to the power zero is one. It's independent of initial concentration. If n is equal to two, t half of a second order reaction is inversely proportional to a, etc. This is n is the order of the reaction here. Clear? Yes. Now, this is <clears throat> whatever we have studied. It is summarized here. If the order is zero, then reaction type is this. Differential rate law is D of R by DT is equal to minus K. Actually, it's minus D R by DT is equal to K. That minus sign is taken to the right side. KT is equal to R naught minus R. Then straight line we get when R is plotted versus T. Then R naught by 2K is half-life and units of K is concentration per time or moles per liter per second, right? If it's first order reaction, then these are the results. That's what we have studied, units of K. Now somebody asked, if it is fraction, order is fraction, how to calculate the units of K? So in general, rate of a reaction is equal to K into concentration of the reactant raised to the power N where N is the order of the reaction. So from this, we can write K is equal to rate divided by concentration of the reactant raised to the power N. Now, what is the unit of rate? It's moles per liter per second, per time, I can say. So this is moles per liter, right? Raised to the power N. Now, when I take it to the numerator, it becomes, so units of K becomes moles per liter per second, then to the power one, correct? One second, per liter, a second, I will take it. Second is not there in the denominator, right? So it is moles per liter to the power one minus N, one minus N, per second. This is the general, or uh, this one, expression to calculate the units or to uh, determine the units of rate constant, okay? Now, we will substitute the value of n. We will see if n is equal to zero. You have to write if n is equal to zero. Hmm. Somebody asked if n is equal to a fraction, then what is the uh, answer? If n is equal to zero, what is k? What is k? K is moles per liter per second, right? N is equal to zero. Zero order reaction, correct. What is the unit of K I'm asking? Unit of K becomes moles per liter per second, right? If N is equal to one, if N is equal to one, huh? N is equal to one, then it's only second inverse or per second or per time, okay? Correct? Yes. If n is equal to 2, this is applicable for any order. 
this is applicable for any order okay if n is equal to 2 then 1 minus 2 becomes minus 1 so it becomes liter per mole per second liter per mole per second if n is equal to half fractional order we will see k is equal to moles per liter to the power 1 minus half is half correct so this becomes moles per liter to the power Half per second. Ah, uh, n is equal to three by four zero point seven five. Anything you can do, just substitute here and calculate. That's it. Okay, that becomes moles to the power half per liter to the power half liter to the power half uh, per second. It becomes clear. Yes. Shall we proceed? Uh, pseudo first order reaction. What is pseudo first order reaction? Where the molecularity of the reaction is other than 2 but the order of the reaction is 1 is called pseudo first order reaction so let us take one example that is hydrolysis of uh, ester say ester ch3 coo c2h5 ethyl acetate or methyl acetate uh, acid hydrolysis okay uh, it undergoes hydrolysis to give corresponding acid And alcohol. Ha, C two uh, H five O H. Now, if you write the rate law, it also should depend on concentration of water. But in this hydrolysis, we are using excess excess of water. So rate doesn't depend on the excess reagent. so i can write rate of the reaction is equal to k into concentration of ch3 coo c2h5 only okay so it is uh, what it it's a reaction where the molecularity of the reaction is more than 1 but the order of the reaction is 1 is called pseudo pseudo means false okay false first order reaction i hope this is clear to you right okay now the rate depends only on the limiting reagent ester is a limiting reagent but one thing you have to be careful here is the reverse reaction is second order reverse reaction is not first order here reverse reaction is second order reaction okay that is pseudo first order reaction okay so we'll solve this time required for 60% completion of first order reaction is 50 minutes the time required for 93.6% of the completion is asked first order reaction is mentioned there are different ways of solving this question that is one is the uh, actual method is just i'll tell you that what is that first calculate k from k is equal to uh, 2.303 divided by T sixty percent. T sixty percent. Okay, what is T sixty percent? It's given. T sixty percent into log of hundred. We'll take hundred divided by hundred minus sixty. Okay, so you have to calculate K. Then what you have to do? T ninety three point six percent is asked. Right? Ninety three point six percent is asked. So you can go for two point three zero three. Divided by k value, which is calculated from this log, hundred divided by hundred minus ninety three point six. This is the way in which you solve the question in the board exam. Not applicable for competitive exam. Okay, so or I gave you one more method that is log x percent divided by uh, sorry time x percent correct t t time taken for x percent by time taken for y percent. Is equal to log of hundred divided by hundred minus x divided by log of hundred by hundred minus y. This is another way. That is x is sixty, y is ninety three point six. Another method. Okay. Now shall we shall go for the same one because ninety three point six percent something very 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 close. What is that? Ninety three point six percent. Can we go back to the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Ninety 
3.6% is very close to 93.75%. It is four times the T half, right? Four times the T half. Now we will go to that four times the T half. Okay, so T 93.6% is four times the T 50%. Now what I do is I will calculate that. T 50%, I'll calculate that also we had calculated actually, if you remember. Huh. T 50%, T 60%, T 50% is 3 fourth of T 60%. You remember this? It calculated T 50% is 3 fourth of T 60%. So come back to that again. Okay. So T 50% is 4 times 3 fourth of T 60%. Okay. So if you remember all these results, then how easily you can solve the question? Huh. Log 10 is 1, log 4 is 0 0.6. Okay. So uh, 1 minus 0 0.6 becomes 0 0.4. 4, 4 will get cancelled. So it is 3 into T 60%. 3 into T 60%, which is equal to 3 into 50, which is equal to 150 minutes. Is it not easy? Is it not easy? It's easier, but you should remember that. If you don't remember, then you can calculate T 50% uh, from this equation, from T 60%, correct? Yes. So you, if it's better you remember the equations what I had given earlier, that relations, all the, the this one, these relations are there, right? Better you remember, better you learn that, okay? So that you can easily calculate the questions. Fine. Yes. Next question. This was again 2020 question. This was also 2020 question. 2020. 3 by 4 or 4 by 3? Those two options are very similar. Look at this. Moles per liter per second, moles per liter per second. You can't make out. So 3 by 4 or 4 by 3? Rate of appearance of C is given and rate of disappearance of B is asked. So I can write minus, it is 1 by 3 times minus D of B divided by DT is equal to, what, is, what do we want? C. So it is 1 by 4, 1 by 4 plus D of C divided by DT. Correct. What is asked? Rate of disappearance of B is asked. Correct. So what is rate of disappearance? This is rate of disappearance of B. Right. So rate of disappearance of B is minus D of B divided by DT, which is equal to 3 by 4 times D of C divided by DT. Correct. So it is this. What is rate of appearance of C? It's given 2.8 into the power minus 3. So what is the answer here? Answer for this question is option A, not option D. If it was asked for C, then if B was given and C was asked, then the answer could have been 4 by 3. Did you understand? So it is <clears throat> option A. Answer is option A. Clear? Okay, next question. Shall we go to the next question? So this is where you have to be very careful. See, options A and D are very, very similar. <clears throat> you may go wrong as some of you have done. You have answered D, some of you have answered A. So what is the correct answer here? It is, you have to divide by 4 because C is coefficient as C is 4. B is 3, you have to multiply by 3. Clear? Okay, next question. This is 2019. There was one more question from kinetics in uh, 2020, but that was on uh, what's that? I mean, that um, collision, uh, some, some related to that effect of temperature. Now, solve this. 2019, it is. <clears throat> okay. 
Pavanish has given the answer as three. Let's see. Trying. Bhaskar also is giving 0 0.25. Ah. Nishanya, correct, 0 0.25. Then Burudat, Manju, all are telling, Madhumita, all are telling 0 0.25. Varsha, is it correct? Yeah, many of you are giving the answer as 0 0.25. How is it 0 0.25? See, as I mentioned, the reaction between ethyl alcohol and acetic acid, is it pseudo first order or second order reaction? It is a second order reaction, correct? Gurudat, is it four times when it is diluted? See, there is one, see, equal volume of water is added means what? Concentration is decreased. When the concentration is decreased, definitely the reaction rate is going to be decreased. So I can eliminate this option and this option okay without any doubt i will eliminate option two and option three option four now we are left with one and three clear now this depends on how you take this it is first order with respect to acetic acid first order with respect to ethyl alcohol but remember <clears throat> uh, hydrolysis of ester is pseudo first order reaction but here it depends on the concentration of both rate one rate one i will write r1 is equal to k into concentration of acetic acid raised to the upper one into concentration of ethyl alcohol raised to the upper one okay so this is initial concentration i'll take this as initial concentration now rate two <clears throat> is equal to k doesn't change k depends only on the temperature okay so it doesn't change with the concentrations so here when we add equal volume of water the final concentration is the half of the initial concentration equal volume of water when you add it becomes half okay raised to the power one and next is ethyl alcohol concentration is also halved okay raised to the power one now this is what K into CH3COOH1 into C2H5 is R1, R1 divided by 4. That is, final rate becomes one-fourth of the initial rate. What is one-fourth of the initial rate? 0 0.25 times R1. So, uh, this one, what is that? Mm, the rate of the reaction with respect to the initial rate, that's the final rate, will be 0 0.25 times the initial. Did you understand? Okay, so if you dilute, so this is a clue for you. If you dilute, definitely the reaction rate is going to be decreased, not increased, because it is directly proportional to the concentration. Okay, that's order is greater than one. If it is negative order reaction, then because when you double the volume, what is molar concentration? Molar concentration, concentration of the reactant is equal to number of moles by volume. So number of moles remains same. One liter of two molar, the number of moles is the same. Two moles will be there. Here yeah, three moles are there. But when you add equal volume of water, equal means what? One liter to this and two liters we are adding. Okay, so total, what happens? This uh, concentration of this also is decreased. Concentration of this also is decreased. That's why we say this, this you remember. When you double the volume, concentration becomes half. When you double the volume, concentration becomes half. Double the volume means it is two times V. Number of moles won't change. Correct. See, it's simple. You have, uh, say, one cup of juice, okay, where you have added more sugar, okay, where, which uh, was sufficient for two glasses of juice. Now you add one more cup of water. So what happens? The sweetness is the total sugar is same, but the sweetness concentration has decreased half it becomes half did you understand okay next question this is again 2019 question a plot of t half
let's mo- let's see uh somebody who had asked uh, me to solve some question gurudev is it yeah you were asking we will solve some questions ma'am see it's it's the theory question Two thousand nineteen question. Yes, here the plot of T half versus R naught, that is A, is a straight line parallel to X axis. We have studied it is straight line. This is T half. We have studied the same graph, right? A, that's R naught. Okay, so if it is this, n is equal to what? One. Yeah, theory helps you a lot. Correct chemistry, just like physics and maths. Chemistry theory-based questions will be more. Problems are very less. Okay, so if you listen to the theory properly while discussing the theory, I am telling you how the questions are asked from that. Correct. So you have to listen to the theory properly in the class. Okay. Yes. So now it's n is equal to one. What is the rate constant for this first order? It is per second. Clear? Yes. If n is equal to zero, then what would have been the answer here? If you get n is equal to zero, so I'll frame a question where uh, n becomes zero, then moles per liter per second. See again, somebody is giving three as the answer. No, three will not be the answer. Why? What is missing there? Second is there here. Okay, so four would be the answer. I repeat the question. In this particular problem, two is the answer. If I had given t half is Increasing or is directly proportional to R naught for the reaction. Okay, then the unit for the rate constant of this reaction it would have been zero order reaction for which K is equal to uh, moles per liter per second. So this would have been the answer if it was the same question was asked for zero order reaction. So it's, you can have two to three question per one question. Okay, next question. This is two thousand eighteen question. What is the answer? It's a very simple question. The value of rate constant, rate constant, pseudo. It's not rate. Ra value of rate constant. What's the answer? Quick again. See, chemistry. If you are very thorough with the theory, will and. The value of rate of a pseudo first order reaction. Many of you have given the answer. Depends on the concentration of the reactants. Does present a small amount. If the question is asked, the value of rate constant of a pseudo rate constant. What's the answer? Rate constant. Does it depend on the concentration of the reactant? Does it depend on the concentration of the reactant? Okay, we will read the. depends only on temperature rate constant depends on temperature right let's come back depends on the concentration of the reactant present in small amount depends on the concentration of reactant present in excess anyway it is ruled out correct then is independent of the concentration of the reactants is independent of the reactant concentration is independent of the concentration of the reactants <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yes. Rate constant of a pseudo first order reaction. Rate constant of a pseudo first order reaction. Rate constant of a reaction depends on temperature, and how we write the stoichiometric equation. Correct. So, ah, uh, it is independent of the concentration of the reactant is also correct here, right? I think the that ah uh, year they have given uh, two options or something. So independent of the concentration of the reactant also can be correct. So depends only on temperature, only on temperature and the stoichiometry. Yeah, both one and four can be the answer here. Is independent of the concentration of the reactant because rate constant doesn't depend on the uh, what the concentrations here. So I can uh, say both one and four are the answers. Clear? Next. This is two thousand eighteen. Only on temperature, yes. <clears throat> What's the answer? Ah, uh, 
reaction is given the rate of disappearance of o2 is given rate of appearance of so3 rate of disappear rate of appearance of so3 is how many times more when one mole of o2 is disappear two moles of so3 will be formed twice so what is the answer 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 2 becomes 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 moles per liter per second correct so it's a very simple question answer is option 2 clear ha huh. one more thing here you have to be careful instead of 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 moles per liter per second if i give you grams 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 moles is how many grams 30 to 64 into 10 to the power minus 4 grams per liter per second units yeah rate rate units all have same units okay uh moles per liter per second rate of this appearance is asked fine if i create this question same question instead of that uh, d of o2 divided by dt is equal to 6 uh, 0.4 uh, 32 into 264 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 grams per liter per second okay then i will ask you to find out what is the rate of uh, appearance plus a rate of appearance so3 by dt is how much i will ask this question and the options i'm giving it is same 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 grams per liter uh, per second option 2 is 2 uh, times the 12. Uh, Eight, which is one point two eight into ten to the power minus two grams per liter per second. Option three is uh, one second. Ten, two, fifty, eighty, one minute, three, thirty two, three point ten to the power minus two grams per liter per second. And option four is some nonsense option. Six point four into ten to the power minus three, something like that. Six into ten to the power minus four grams per liter per second. I hope the answer what I have given is correct. The values. Quick. Oh, Nar Namrata has given answer three. Guru, that's three. Many of you are giving answer two. Varun is three. Rashmi is three. What's the answer? If two is the answer, I would not have given the question at all. Okay, why? Because this this is grams. If you see here moles per liter, moles is not same as grams. Remember one thing. So. Convert this to grams. Two into ten to the power minus four is how many grams? I multiplied this by thirty-two. Thirty-two two is a sixty-four. Sixty-four into ten to the power minus three. I am writing it as ten to the power minus three uh, grams. So I have given six point four into ten to the power minus gram three uh, grams per liter per second. Yes. So rate convert this to moles per liter. This will be the moles per liter, right? Then rate of appearance is this moles per liter. So this is equal to how many grams you have to calculate? Four into ten to the power minus four into <clears throat> what is the molar mass of SO three? What's sulfur? Sulfur thirty two. Oxygen sixteen three is a forty eight. Forty eight plus thirty two becomes forty eight fifty eight. Eight four is a thirty two. Three twenty into Ten to the power minus four, three twenty into ten to the power minus four, three twenty into ten to the power minus four. I am writing it as three point two into ten to the power minus two grams per liter per second. Here it is given in terms of moles per liter per second. Varsha, then how did you write three as an answer? I I think you have given three as an answer. Okay. This is moles. How do you convert moles to grams? 
how do you convert if i have one mole of uh, say which one one mole of uh, sodium chloride in one liter of water one liter of sodium chloride in one liter of water how many grams of sodium chloride i have one mole is 58.5 grams so 58.5 grams is dissolved in one liter so i'm converting 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 moles of o2 to grams how by multiplying by 32 because 32 is a molar mass of oxygen 32 into 2 is 64 64 into 10 to the power minus 4 is 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 grams are you following varsha now rate of appearance of so3 is asked in grams per liter it's not moles per liter we know now this many grams first you convert it to moles per liter how do you convert moles per liter 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 32 you will get this as answer i converted the same value here so you will convert this to moles per liter then two times this will be rate of appearance of so3 but i again i have given this in grams per liter so what i have to do multiply the value what you will get multiply that by molar mass of what Sulfur dioxide. So this becomes four into ten to the power minus four into eighty. That becomes three twenty into ten to the power minus four, or three point two into ten to the power minus two grams per liter per second. Is that is that clear? Okay. So like this, you have to be careful whether gram is given or moles is given. For CET, generally moles per liter only will be given, but just check whether it's gram. Okay. Next question. Yes, the half-life period of a first-order reaction is sixty minutes. What percentage will be left over after two forty minutes? What is two forty minutes? You can use the shortcut method, right? Yes. Many of you are giving six point two five as an answer. Who are given four as an answer? Check, Akil. Okay, sixty and two forty. First order reaction. Sixty and two forty. Four times. Correct. So T. Now we have to calculate four T halves. After how much is left? After four T half, right? So concentration of R remaining after four T half is initial concentration is hundred if you take divided by two to the power four, two to the power four. So that also you can calculate. Or what you can do is what? Okay, okay. First order reaction. What can sixty minutes? Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> how much is remaining now? Huh. So it is. Uh, uh, how much reacted? Two forty after four T half. How much will react? T T ninety three point seven five percent is equal to four T half. Correct? Four fifty percent. Right? Ninety three point seven five percent has reacted. So how much is remaining? Is asked. Left over. How much is left over? So you are getting. How much is remaining? Hundred minus ninety-three point seven five, which is equal to six point two five. So there may be option of ninety-three point seven five also. So be careful, or else you can use a formula. The amount remaining, correct? This is applicable only for the first order. Amount remaining for the first order is equal to hundred. Let us take hundred because its percentage is given two to the power four, because it's four. So hundred divided by sixteen, hundred divided by sixteen. What answer you are getting? <clears throat> Six point two five only you are getting. Okay, so any method you can use here. Clear? Next question. R <clears> not <throat> by two. Here R not is taken as a uh, hundred.
option four. Many of you are given, giving option four. Some of you are given two as an answer. Okay. For a chemical reaction, the rate law is K into A to the power two. If the concentration of A is doubled, <clears throat> the rate of the reaction is doubled to the power two, doubled to the power two, two A to the power two becomes two square, four times it is increased, right? So the answer is quadrupled. Quadrupled means what? <clears throat> increased four times, correct? So uh, if again, those who have some confusion with this, R1, you're right, it is K into concentration of A1 square. A1 is initial, okay. So R2 is equal to K into, what happens to concentration of A? Two times the concentration of A. Correct, two times concentration of, I'll write, this is two times the initial concentration of A square, whole square. So I'll write, it's four times K into concentration of A1 square. But what is this? It is nothing but R1. So R2 is four times R1. This is how you can understand, okay? And this is how you can solve the question for the, uh, in the competitive exams, okay, easily. Next question. In a first order reaction, the concentration of the reactant is reduced to 12.5% in one hour. What is its, uh, what, uh, when was it half completed? So many of you are going wrong. Ah. Only few are giving the correct answer. Check your answer once. Okay, let me see this. Concentration of the reactant is reduced to 12.5% means how much reacted? How much reacted? 100 minus 12.5% reacted. That is 100 minus 12.5% reacted. How much is this? How much is this? 100 minus 12.5. 100 minus 12.5 is how much? 87.5. Right? 87.5% it's 60 minutes. Correct? And what is asked? When was it half completed? T half is asked. Okay. T 87.5% is equal to how many T halves? T50% is to T75% is to T87.5% is 1 is to 2 is to 3. So it is 3 times T half. It is 3 times T half. So T half is equal to, what is the answer? 60 minutes divided by 3, which is equal to 20 minutes. It is less than, it is not 30, it is 20 minutes. Again, you are doing that mistake. Okay. So it is 60 divided by 3, which is equal to 20 minutes. Hope all of you have understood. Understood? See you, if you use that, what is that? Okay, memorize that several times. What is that? T50% is to T, T50%. Repeat this. I'm repeating this for your, okay, T50% is to T75% uh, is to T. T 87.5% is to T, 93. I'm, I'm telling that one only, Chaitra. T, 93.75%. Uh, it's uh, okay, it's uh, enough. 1 is to 2 is to 3. Now, T, 50% is to T, 87.5% is 1 is to 3 means, what is 87.5%? Understood. So, it is 3 times T half. It is T50%. Understood? Chaitra, T50%, T50% divided by, correct? Yeah. Um, yes, it's very useful because you can easily solve the questions using this. 
the right here. So T50 percent divided by T87.5 percent is equal to 1 is to 3. This implies T87.5 percent is equal to what? Huh. It is 3 times T50 percent. Understood, Nashita? Yes, good. Ultimately, at the end of the class, you should be able to solve some questions without any doubt. Okay, that's the main aim of these sessions. Fine, next question. <clears throat> Half-life period of a first order reaction is 10 minutes. Starting with initial concentration of 12 molar, the rate after 20 minutes is. Nice question. It is. Solving. <clears throat> Shall I solve? Yes, we will solve. Half life of a first order reaction is 10 minutes. Rate after 20 minutes is asked. First, you write rate is asked. So, rate of any reaction is equal to rate constant into concentration of the reactant at that particular instant, okay? So, rate uh, R, that's reactant, okay? Concentration raised to the power, uh, starting with, uh, okay, uh, first order reaction, right? So, it is R to the power 1, reactant raised to the power 1. Now, half-life of a first order reaction is 10 minutes. So, K you can calculate, that is equal to 0 0.693 divided by T half, T half, T 50 percent, right? So, it is uh, 0 0.693 divided by T 50 percent is given as 10. So, it becomes 0 0.0693, okay? Next, what is the reactant concentration left after 20 minutes you have to calculate? If you start 20 minutes, how is it related with the 10 minutes? It is two times T half. That means it is uh, after two half, how much is left? So amount remaining, that is R, is equal to R naught divided by two to the power N, where N is the number of half lives. It is 12 divided by two to the power two, correct? What is 2 to the power 2? Because n is 2 halves, 2 half lives, 2, ten, two times 10 uh, is 20. I hope this is clear to you. Is it clear? So, what is this? 12 divided by 4. 12 by 4 is 3. Now you substitute. K value is 0 0.0693 into R value is 3, right? And <clears throat> rate is moles per liter is nothing but molarity per minute. It's not per second because your minute is given, time is given in minutes. So this is the answer. In which option we have this as the answer? Again, somebody is typing B as the answer, four is the answer. Is it four the answer? Is the answer four or one? Correct, option one is a correct answer. See, again, look at this decimal. Okay, so be careful, watchful while answering the question. You will lose simply one mark, right? So be careful while answering, bubbling the OMR sheets. Okay, shall we proceed? 
zero point zero six nine three, right? So that is the answer. Option one is the answer. Clear? Shall we proceed? Yes. Next question. See, you are observing uh, many questions are based on that uh, fifty percent, twenty five minutes. Then this percent, how much? Like all questions, sir. Rate like that. Rate of any reaction. That's a, a general equation for rate, right? Rate of any order reaction. Rate of any order reaction is equal to rate constant into concentration of the reactant raised to the power n, where n is the order of the reaction. Understood, Nishita? So here it's given uh, first order reaction. So I've taken raised to the power one. Clear? Okay. Next. Fifty percent of the reactant is converted into product in a first order reaction in twenty-five minutes. These are the different ways of telling P half is this much. How much of it would react in hundred minutes? Very simple question. Hundred minutes is forty half. Forty half is. Forty half is ninety three point seven five percent, right? Yeah, option one. I need not explain this, I guess, right? So T ninety three point seven five percent is forty half, and hundred minutes is four times the T half here, correct? So I can easily tell the answer as one. Any doubt? Shall we proceed? Shall we proceed? Yes. Next question. Okay, I'll repeat. Here, fifty percent of the reactant is converted to product in twenty-five minutes. What is the meaning of this? T fifty percent. T fifty percent is twenty-five minutes. Okay, what is asked? How much is completed in hundred minutes? Is asked. What is hundred minutes? Hundred minutes is four T halves. Four times fifty percent. Okay, four times T half is equal to T ninety three point seven five percent. Go to that. T fifty percent is to T seventy five percent is to T eighty seven point five percent is to T ninety three point seven five percent is one is to two is to three is to four. So four times T fifty percent is T ninety three point five percent. So in hundred minutes, how much is completed? Ninety three point seven five percent is completed. Clear. This is this much will be completed in seventy five minutes. This much will be completed in fifty minutes. Hundred percent is not possible at all. It will take infinite time because it's a first order reaction. Is that okay? Shall we proceed? Okay. Next question. This question. Phi t half again. You calculate phi t half. What is phi times t half? After that, ninety. I've given that right. In the beginning only I have given you that. After ninety three point seven five percent comes ninety six point some percentage. That one, Rishan. Some are giving a as the answer. Two as the answer. Four, three. This type of questions were asked uh, in the. Is it same everywhere? Yeah, it is same uh, for the first order reaction, Prashant. <clears throat>
How do you solve this question? Okay. So I will give you first how to solve the question. In the beginning, one method I will show. Then I will uh, give you the shortcut. Okay. See, this is R1. You write. This is R1. Okay. R1 is uh, this one. Keeping one case constant. Yes. R1. R1. The first case I'm taking is equal to um, concentration of A. K is remaining. Concentration of A. I will not substitute the value. Just I'm, I'm taking concentration of A1. Uh, to the power m, where m is the order with respect to a. And concentration of b, 1, that's the first case, with, uh, with what's that order with respect to b is n. Let us take like this. Okay, next. R2, what is R2? K doesn't change. Now, listen now. Okay, <clears throat> Vinaya, you change your answer now. Okay. Okay. Um, Next case, look at this. How I'll, I'll show you how to solve this question. K into, in the second case, concentration of A is remaining same. So it is A1 only, correct? Huh. <clears throat> to the power M into concentration of B is double, correct? So can I write this as two times the concentration of B1? I'm, uh, why I'm taking the general expression as this is only change the values only is changing. Okay, now stop giving the answer. Listen to the explanation properly. All of you stop doing the question. Now listen to the explanation properly. This is how you have to solve. Okay, N. Now you do like this R1 divided by R2. What is R1? Now you have to substitute the value because you have to get the values of M and N. Okay, so R1 was 2, R2 is 4. Then a1 to the power m, a1 to the power m gets cancelled, k gets cancelled. So what is remaining there is bn to the power n, b1 to the power n, correct? Then b1, 2 to the power n, 2 to the power n into concentration of b1 to the power n. This will get cancelled, right? Or I have this is equal to 1 by 2. 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. So what is this? 1 by 2 to the power n is equal to 1 by 2 implies n is equal to 1. That means the order of the reaction with respect to B is 1. So I can rule out some options, which is that option 2 and option 4 I can rule out. Now I'm left with option 1 and option 3. Elimination method, those who have given option 4, it's wrong. Those have given option two, it's wrong. Now let us come back to the next. Okay, R3, let me write. Rate three. Okay, this is lengthy method. I'll show you the easy method to solve, solve this question. Okay, so listen carefully. R3. R3 is again K into concentration of A1. Okay, now what I'm doing, I'm increasing the concentration of A three times. So shall I write it as three times the concentration of A in the beginning, right? To the power M, clear? Then we know the value of N here because N, we got it as one. Okay, now compare. This is 0 0.2. Earlier it was 0.2. Or, or we will take these two. This is easier. Okay, this was, I'm comparing two and three. Okay, so earlier it was 0.4. And it is 0.4. It is remaining. Okay, 0.4 is remaining constant. Or R3, R3 we will write. Okay, R3, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. So B1, I'll, yeah, M is equal to 2. Are you getting M is equal to 2? Let's see. So here, uh, 0 0.2 into 2. So 2 into concentration of B1. The whole uh, to the per n value, we know n value, we got it as 1. Now I'll substitute that because I, I will not go for a change of both. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll take R1 by R3. Uh, R1 by R3 becomes equal to R1 by R3. R1 was what? K into concentration of A1 to the per m into B1 to the per n divided by 
concentration R3 is K into 3, 3 to the power M into 3 to the power m into concentration of A1 to the power m into 2 to the power 1 into, hope you are following this, B to the B1, correct? Now, B, N, N is 2 here. N, you substitute it as 2. Uh, sorry, 1. 1, right? N is 1. Now, you cancel. This gets cancelled. This gets cancelled. This gets cancelled. R1 by R3, R1 is 2, R3 is 36. R1 is 2 and this is 36, right? This is equal to, what answer you're getting here? Uh, 1 divided by 3 to the power m into 2 or 1 divided by 3 to the power m is equal to 4 by 36. What is 4 by 36? 1 divided by 9. 3 what is 9? 3 square is 9. Correct? So m becomes equal to m becomes equal to m becomes equal to 2. Clear? m is equal to 2. So now tell me the answer. What is the answer? k into a square into b will be the answer. Is that correct? Did you understand? How to solve this question? All of you have understood? All of you have understood, right? Yes. Now, this is a very lengthy method which takes some time. Now, you have to solve the question like this. How? Compare. Point 0.2, point 0.2, you take one. It's constant, right? When you double the concentration of B, the rate is getting doubled. That means it is first order with respect to B. If the rate is getting, listen carefully, if the rate is getting doubled, it's a first order, double. Okay. If rate is increased by four times, when you double the concentration by two times, when you double the, sorry, when you double the concentration, if the rate is increased by four times, two square. Okay, listen, two square. So it is four. I repeat, if the order of the reaction is two, then the rate increases by four times when you double the concentration. If you double the concentration, if rate is doubled, then it is first order. Okay, next. So, 0.2 to 0.4, it is doubling means rate with respect to B is 1. Understood, right? Now, I'm keeping, see, I will compare option, uh, sorry, uh, experiment 1 and 3. So here, uh, what we are doing here is, see, we are increasing the concentration of A by 3 times. We are doubling the concentration of B by 2 times. When you double the concentration of B by two times, the rate should be doubled, correct? But now, when you are increasing the concentration by three times, rate is increased by 18, correct? Uh, M is it three? How is it three? Three square you will get, right? Did you understand? Okay. Uh, so, what will happen here? See, when you change, you, if you, uh, are comparing this 4 and 36 if you are comparing. Look at this. Yeah, 4 and 36 also you can compare 9 times. So you are keeping the concentration of B in experiment 2 and 3. So whatever rate changes, it doesn't depend on this. It depends on A concentration. Now we are increasing the concentration of A 3 times, but the rate is increased 9 times. 4, 9 is 36. 4 9s are 36. 3 to the power what will give 9? 3 square will give 9. Understood? Rina, did you understand or sh I should explain again? It is not someone had asked whether it is 1 or 3. It is 1. It is not 3. M, you can calculate. I've shown you the calculation. You just go through this and do it again. Understood? Someone else asked me whether it is 3 or 1 again. Will you do it again? I repeat how you can solve this easily. Compare this one, keeping one fixed. Compare this. It's getting double means it is, it is, I, I'll repeat that. I'll repeat the easy method. Okay, this is a method what I follow. I will not follow this lengthy method. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing these two. So these two are fixed. So concentration of A is not changed means the change in rate is not due to the concentration of A. It is due to the concentration of B. What we are doing? We are doubling the concentration of B. 
when you double the concentration of b what is happening to the rate rate is also getting doubled that means it is first order with respect to b done okay next we have to compare these two now it is fixed so whatever increase in rate you are observing it is not due to b now it should be due to a now when what time it is increased three times it is increased so how many times the rate is increased four nines are 36 when you increase the concentration by three times if the rate is getting increased by nine times three square is nine so square m is equal to two it is two times that means it is second order with respect to a clear so it is a square b any doubt any doubt shall we proceed so that's easy method clear now you try to solve this type of question you may get it in the previous year question or somewhere okay so you try to solve this type of question you will get it here next question yes the first order reaction is 60 percent complete in 20 minutes how long will it take for the 84 percent completion Last answer is three. Which answer is three? Devika. Devika, which question you were telling? Huh, tell Devika, last question. This one, the this question you're talking about. Huh, yes, what do you want? Devika, what do you want to ask about this question? Option, correct answer is one. Devika, B power is one, I'm telling, B to the power one, B to the power one. What is your doubt I'm not getting? I've clearly answered this. We have worked out this, right? N is equal to one. What is N? N is the power, B. Devika, what is your doubt? <coughs> Okay, next question. Nishchita, everyone is important. Okay. It's my duty to clarify your doubts, right? If you have some doubt, if I skip that and go, how do you feel? It's same for everyone. A first order reaction is 60% complete in 20 minutes. How long will it take for 84% reaction? Okay. Huh. So um, you have different methods, right? P60%, any method you follow. And I have another method now. I'll show whatever method you might have followed, but I'll show another method. What is that? I told you one statement, if you can recall. Time taken for a fixed amount of reaction to be completed for a first order reaction is fixed. So I repeat, time taken for a particular fraction of the reaction to be completed is fixed for a first order reaction. It's applicable only for the first order reaction. That is, T30% is fixed, T21% is fixed, T60% is fixed. It will not change. It doesn't depend on the initial concentration. That's what I said. T60% is same whether you begin with 100 grams or 60 grams or 40 grams. That is what I meant. It's independent of initial concentration. Okay. Now I'm coming back to this. When I have 100 grams, so 100% I had in the beginning, remaining I'm writing. Okay. Remaining. 100%. Okay, now, yeah, 40 answer, 40 minutes is answer, right? Now I'm, I'm telling, 100% reacting. Now, reacting, how much is reacting? 60% is reacting. How much will remain? If 60% react, 
after 20 minutes, after 20 minutes, see zero is reacting in the beginning. Okay, zero percent is reacting, reacting. I'll write reacting here. So after 20 minutes, how much will be reacting? 60% will react. 100 minus 60 is 40%. Yeah. 100% is initial. It's remaining. 100% is initial. Yeah, and remaining. Right. Reacting is zero. When it is 100% remaining, 0% is reacting. When 60% is reacting, 40% is remaining. Are you getting? Now, next 20 minutes. I'm taking next 20 minutes. This is what I meant. 20 minutes. The same fraction would react. So next 20 minutes, next 20 minutes, 40% of, sorry, 60% of 40 will react. Are you getting? What is 60% of 40? 60% 60 of 40, six fours are 24. Okay. So it is 24% will react in the next. Okay. So 24% is reacting in another Okay, so how much? 60 plus 24 is 84% reacting in another 20 minutes. So how much is remaining? If 84% react, how much is remaining? 60% will remain. But we don't want this. We need this. Because if the question is asked, how long will the reaction, uh, how long it will take uh, for the reactant to be 16% remaining, then same, 84% complete. So 20 plus 20 is 40. This is another way of answering the question. Is that correct? Yeah, we can do it for all the questions. Yes. Any, no, but only thing is, it is uh, what? It is first order reaction. It's only for the first order reaction. Yes, I'll explain again. In the beginning, 100% was there. After 20 minutes, 60% reacts. Okay, Mohammed. Uh, sixty percent react means how much is remaining? Forty percent is remaining. Okay, in twenty minutes, forty percent is remaining. Next to twenty minutes, that's what I said. Same time is taken for a particular fraction of the reaction to take place for the first order reaction. In next to twenty minutes, also sixty percent reacts. Sixty percent of forty is how much? Because for uh, first order reaction, Ishita is independent of initial concentration. Time taken for the first, uh, some fraction of the reaction is independent of initial concentration for the first order reaction. That you can learn by the, uh, this one, integrated uh, rate law is there, right? So when you apply that, you will understand. It's independent of initial concentration. Because log of something you're getting, right? Log of some reactant concentration that gets cancelled. So only constants will remain there. Clear? Okay. But whereas, for the other reaction, log term doesn't appear. That is why you have the concentration term for all uh, reaction except first order reaction. Uh, now, coming back to this. Next 20 minutes, 60% of this will react. So 60% of 40 is what? 24%. 60 plus 24 becomes 84%. So 84% will be completed within next 20. 20 plus 20 becomes 40 minutes. So this is another method. Okay, next question. Uh, this is based on the pressure, okay, which you may not be uh, thorough with, I don't know. Uh, let me explain this or you want to try this once. Do you want to try this question or shall I explain? Yeah, I'll explain this. Listen. Yeah. So what is the question asked? The rate constant in minute inverse is asked. That is the first order reaction, correct? Yes. So I'll take the reaction to a gas. All are in the gaseous state. 
okay so b plus c now uh, what is given at the end of 10 minutes total pressure was 300 after the completion of the reaction see actually it is uh, what is that um, the theory it's not it can't be completion now we will consider it's almost at the end of the reaction 100% completion is not possible for a first order reaction but let us assume that it is completed okay suppose initial pressure is p0 okay initial pressure of a is p0 now at any instant how much is reacting how much is reacting x let us take x atmosphere react two x atmosphere reacts p0 is the initial pressure and after the completion of the uh, yes once again at time t after 10 minutes after 10 minutes i'll tell after at the end of 10 minutes 2x will react okay so how what is the pressure of b form it is x and this is also x so at any instant p naught minus 2x plus x plus x will be remaining okay now at the end of the reaction what is happening all a will decompose to give b and c at the end of the reaction all a will decompose at the end of the reaction clear that is if i start with 100 atmosphere c is so yeah 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 c is solid very good yeah sorry c is solid here yes so a is gas a is gas b is gas and c is solid so pressure we will not consider the pressure here now what will happen after 10 minutes okay this is after 10 minutes i don't know how much of a is reacting so let us take 2x atmosphere of a pressure of a reacting is 2x but when 2x is reacting x atmosphere of b will be formed because two moles is giving one mole and pressure is directly proportional to number of moles for the gas now total pressure p total is equal to p naught minus 2x plus x this is the total pressure at any time t okay this is after 10 minutes we'll calculate so p naught plus uh, minus x okay so this is given p naught total pressure is 300 it's given 300 uh, pascal is given clear but we neither know p naught nor x but now second data look at that after the completion there will not be any a left we have to assume that okay after completion of the reaction there will not be any a left so all is converted to b that is 200 here if 2x pascal react x pascal of b will be formed so what is the pressure x x value is given as 200 so what should be p naught p naught should be equal to what here you can take after completion okay so p total is 200 so what is uh what should be the total pressure of this this should be 400 two times i hope this is clear to you did you understand this 400 pascal of a after complete reaction will give 200 pascal of b did you understand that did you understand the step quick i want the answer you have to respond okay 400 pascal of a after complete reaction will give 200 pascal of b did you understand so what is 400 can you tell what is 400 that is p naught p naught is 400 clear ha huh. now 400 minus x is 300 what is x what is x so you have this data right so this data 300 400 minus x is 300 so x is x is 100 did you understand 100 pascal clear x is 100 pascal in 10 minutes okay initial initially it was 400 so how much is reacting 2x is reacting in 10 minutes that is 200 from this i will have within 10 minutes in 10 minutes how much is reacting 2x pascal is reacting that is 200 pascal is reacting what is p naught p naught was 400 400 pascal out of 400 pascal 200 is remain uh, what is that reacting so what is t half 
this indicates t half is 10 minutes did you understand this t half is 10 minutes why because this change happens within 10 minutes so what is the question rate constant is asked rate constant k is equal to 0 0.693 divided by t half what is t half 10 minutes 0 0.693 divided by 10 so it is 0 0.0693 is the answer clear did you understand have you understood this question yes next question the rate constant of a reaction is given the time required to reduce 2 gram of the reactant to 0.2 grams. No shortcut, Akil. You have to solve like that only. Okay, because pressure, it will change. This expression will change. This expression will change uh, with the reaction. Whether A giving b plus c to a giving b this is ignored like that okay so it will change with the reaction option two 500 seconds Allar uh, Kaveri, is it 100? Check. All are giving two as answer, 500 second as answer, approximately 500. Let's solve. The rate constant is given as per second. So it shows it is what order reaction, first order reaction, order of the reaction is one. So time required to reduce two gram of the reactant to 0.2 grams. So 0.2 gram is remaining, 2 gram was taken, 2 to the upper end. Which formula I'm using? Which formula I'm using? Which formula I'm using? This 0.2 is equal to 2 divided by 2 to the upper end I have used. What is that formula? Amount of the substance remaining is equal to initial amount divided by 2 to the upper end. This is applicable only for the first order reaction. Correct? So I can write 2 to the power n is equal to 2 divided by huh, after n half life, 2 to the power n divided by 0.2 or this is 10. 2 to the power n is equal to 10. This also I can go because you can't take the square root of 10. 3.16 somewhere around this you are getting 3.16. Okay. Uh, root of 10 is 3. Uh, sorry. It's not root. N you, uh, is, it, is it 3? N is 3. It's not three because two to the power three is eight. It's more than that, okay? Or what you can do is first calculate what? K value here. Oh, sorry, K is given here, all right? So rate constant from that, you can calculate T half, all right? From this, you can calculate T half. Then you can go ahead with this. Or you can do it like this, nothing else. Just substitute, very simple way. It's T is equal to. 2.303 divided by 4.6 into 606 into 10 to the power minus 3 into log of 2 divided by 0.2. This is also a very easy method here because it's getting cancelled. Okay, so it is 2 times. So it is 1 divided by 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 log 2 by, so it is log 10, 1000 by 2 is equal to 500. So 500 second will be the answer. Sometimes yeah, you can go for this. Got it? Yeah. Shall we proceed? So 500 is the answer for this question. Next. 40 grams of a substance was left over in 10 minutes when started with 80 grams. 80 grams will leave 40 grams in 10 minutes. The same substance remained 10 grams starting with 20 grams in 10 minutes again. The order of the reaction is. Correct. Vinaya. Vinaya is given first order. Is it correct? How do you solve this question? Solving? Are you solving the question, all of you? Hmm. Satvik, first order. Huh. Yeah. 
yeah many of you got it very good first order reaction good how 40 grams becomes sorry 80 grams becomes 40 grams t half is 80 grams becoming 40 grams this is t half t half is what 10 minutes correct and 10 20 grams becoming 10 grams again t half this is a t half only right there also it is 10 minutes that means whether you start with 80 grams or 20 gram, T half remains same. It's independent of the initial concentration, correct? We have the formula T half 1 divided by T half uh, 2. What is 0? It's not 0 order. T half is inversely proportional to what? <clears throat> T half is inversely proportional to a to the power n minus 1, right? So, it is A2 divided by A1 raised to the power n minus 1. So, you can solve T half 1, T half 2. What was T half 1? T half 1 was 10 minutes. This was 1. A2 was 80 divided by A24 raised to the power. Something like this. And you change the initial concentration. Okay. So, answer for this question is 1. Okay. If it was uh, 20 gram becomes 10 grams. In how many times it is decreased? 4 times it is decreased. So, T half is also decreased by 4 times. 2.5 gram. If I give same question, 2.5 minutes. Can you tell me the answer? What is the answer? Ah, is it second order? See, when you have taken 80 grams, 80 grams becomes 40 grams in 10 minutes. Correct? Now, uh, 20 grams, 80 becomes 20, it is decreased by 4 times. Right? When you decrease the concentration 4 times, T half is also decreased by 4 times. T half is directly proportional to T half is directly proportional to A in which order reaction? Zero order, zero order reaction. If it was, if when you are decreasing the concentration by four, if the T half is increased by four, 40 minutes. If 40 minutes, if this was 40 minutes, then it would have been second order. Clear? Next question. The rate constant does not depend upon. Does it depend on temperature? Yes, it depends. Activation energy, it depends. Catalyst, yes, it depends on the catalyst also, but it doesn't depend on the concentration of the reactants and the product. Theory-based question, correct? Yes, this question. Again, theory-based question. Which of the plots would give a straight line for a first-order reaction? Plots, you have to know. It's very simple because first order reaction will have log, right? So log A versus T will give us a straight line for a first order reaction, correct? I think all the, yeah, one more question is there. One, oh, this is a lot, no, many questions are there. Yeah, two, three more questions. Yeah, we'll finish that. Shall we finish those questions? Yeah, do this. <clears throat> Shall I do? Will you listen? Yeah. Look at this. First, you equate this. First, you equate. That is, Minus D of A, uh, sorry, it's uh, half into, yeah, 1 by 2 into uh, minus half of this. Option D, yeah, very good, Gurudath, yes, it's option D. Let's see, D of A divided by DT is equal to, with respect to B, minus 1 by 4 times D of B 
divided by dt is equal to plus 1 by 3 times d of concentration of C by dt. Now you substitute this. Minus dA by dt is k1 into 2b square. So it is minus d of this, so half into uh, k1 into 2 square is 4 uh, into b square. Shall I write like this? Okay, yeah. Then minus 1 by 4 into d of b by dt is k2, k2 into concentration of b square. And d of c is k3 b square. So it is plus 1 by 3 into, it should have been plus, okay, here make it plus. It's not minus, it should have been plus. Uh, k3, k3, no, it should be minus only. Yeah, that's why, yeah, it's a sort of solution because all our positive is given, right? Minus t of this minus, minus no, no, it's plus only one second because minus d of yeah, it's it's minus is not there here. Okay, so it is plus only. It is it should be plus. Make it plus. Yes. Now one by three into d of c by dt is what k three into b square k3 into b square. Now b square everywhere you can cancel, right? So you have uh, 4 by 2 is 2k1 is equal to 1 by 4k2 is equal to uh, 1 by 3k3, right? Now you multiply throughout by what? 12. Now you Can you multiply throughout by 12? So 12 twos are 24k1 is equal to 4 3s are so 3 k 2 is equal to 4 k 3 will be the answer so option 4 is the answer is that clear yes next t half of a reaction is doubled as the initial concentration of the reactant is doubled you can easily answer this question quick t half is yes it is mm, it's not one T half is independent of initial concentration for a first order reaction. T half is doubled. It's directly proportional to initial concentration for, yeah, zero order reaction. T half is decreased by half when the concentration is doubled, then it becomes two. Clear? Yeah, last question. Yeah, this is the last question. 50% of a first order reaction is completed in 340 seconds. The time taken for 90% completion of the reaction, I've given you one shortcut. T half and T 90%, how are they related? Quick, can you tell me the formula? T half and T 90%, how are they related? That's what you have to write it to. No, no, not four times, no. Uh, four and three are not same. 3 is 115 and 4 is 1151. What is the... <clears throat> now I'm asking you, what is the shortcut formula? T90%, sorry. T90% is equal to 3 point, not 3 times, 3.33 times 10 by 3 it will be. T half, T50%. Correct? Yes. So it is 3.33 times 346. 346 threes are 350,000 something you're getting and you have only one option above 1000. So that is option four. Do you understand? Is it not easy? Did you learn something which was useful? Correct? The shortcut will be very easy for you to solve the questions. Instead of solving lengthy method, you can solve this using that shortcut. Okay, yes, thank you. Solve more questions.